mean the X-Men? Hey there guys, this is Richard, your host. Welcome to another marvellous video. It's always challenging to take up the revival of a beloved animated series, and X-Men 97 seems to have emerged with flying colours after the first two episodes. Much like the original X-Men, the animated series, the reboot remains faithful to the comic books, and the eventful couple of episodes have set up the story quite nicely going ahead. However, there have been a few surprising twists in the narrative, and one of the biggest shockers comes at the end of episode 2 when the truth about Jean Grey is revealed. In this video, we'll explore everything around this surprise package and try to figure out if Jean Grey will be established as an unexpected villain in the episodes to come. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. ...all of existence, but there was Scott, fighting by my side. How do the first two episodes of X-Men 97 explore Jean Grey? We get a look at Jean Grey in the very first episode titled, To Me, My X-Men. She's pregnant with a baby boy, and Cyclops is her partner. Even with all the developments going around them, from the presence of Sentinel weapons among the members of the mutant-hating Friends of Humanity, to Magneto coming back to take command of the X-Men according to Professor Xavier's dying wish, she seems more focused on building a quiet family with her partner and a baby. She talks to her partner Cyclops about leaving the life with the X-Men behind, and Cyclops is an taken aback by her decision. He reminds her that they're the first members of the X-Men, but she convinces him that the team is now ready to function without them. Wolverine has somehow gotten the wind of her plan, and even though he's over his feelings for her, there are still some lingering emotions that are clearly visible. Later in the episode, when Cyclops and Storm head out to interrogate Mr. Gyrick to find information about Bolivar Trask, the man responsible for killing Xavier, Jean Grey gets into his mind to find out what he's hiding. She experiences a traumatic vision while trying to read his mind, and in this vision, she finds herself vulnerable trying to protect her baby boy all alone. But she still manages to retrieve crucial information about the location of Bolivar Trask and Master Mold, even though she's traumatized. The X-Men are able to conduct a successful mission thanks to this information. In the second episode, titled Mutant Liberation Begins, Jean Grey has a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with Storm, and she tells Storm about her concerns. We learn that she's skeptical about her baby being a mutant because he would then have to grow up in a world that discriminates against him. Later, when Magneto stands trial at the UN for his crimes against humanity, Jean Grey goes into labor with only Wolverine there at the X-Mansion to assist her to the hospital. The doctor is initially hesitant to conduct the surgery to give birth to a mutant baby, but finally she gives birth to a baby boy who's named Nathan Charles Summers. Just as everything seems to be fine among the X-Men after Magneto is pardoned by the UN and the world seems to be more accepting of mutants, a shocking turn of events throws their lives into complete disarray. The episode ends with a battered and weary Jean Grey knocking at the door of the X-Men, pleading for their help. Each and every member of the mutant team are shocked out of their wits, because the one they thought to be Jean Grey, and the one who just gave birth to Cyclops' baby, is right beside them. Who is the original Jean Grey, and what on earth is happening here? If he's a mutant, how do I tell him he's different? Is Madeline Pryor being introduced into the series? What happens to Madeline Pryor in the comics? There were already enough hints provided by the showrunners that Madeline Pryor will be a part of X-Men 97. Moreover, Hasbro's Marvel Legends toys for the series featured a Madeline Pryor action figure, and it was a clear giveaway. The second episode just opened up the possibility of this character appearing in the show in the following episodes. One of the two Jean Greys that we see is obviously a clone, and Madeline Pryor is the most well-established clone of Jean Grey in the comic books. So, let's take a quick look at how her story pans out in the comics. She was first seen during the events of Uncanny X-Men number 168, and she appeared following the disastrous events of the Dark Phoenix saga. During this, Jean Grey had died, and Madeline had an uncanny resemblance to Jean, much to the bewilderment of the X-Men. At first, Cyclops assumed that she was a reincarnation of Jean Grey, but over a period of time he started to recognize her individually as a different person. They got closer, and before you knew it, the couple got married and had a baby. Meanwhile, Cyclops was dethroned as the leader of the X-Men by Storm, and he planned to abandon the group and live out a quiet life with his family. However, it all changed when Jean Grey was resurrected during the events of X Factor, and posed with a unique dilemma, Cyclops chose to rekindle his romance with Jean and abandoned his wife. This marked a turning point in the life of Madeline Pryor, and she could never come to terms with the loss. She ended up sleeping with her brother-in-law, and even struck a deal with demons Sim and Nastir, where she would help them establish a link between Earth and the extra-dimensional other place in return for information about the X-Men. She also found out that she was created 
created as a part of a genetic experiment conducted by Mr. Sinister, and she was put away as a failed experiment before the Phoenix gave her sentience. The whole saga of Madeline meeting and falling in love with Cyclops and having his baby had been planned by Mr. Sinister, and this was also an extension of his experiments. The demonic influence turned her into the psychotic Goblin Queen, and she fought the X-Men on countless occasions because she blamed Scott and Jean Grey for her condition. She even tried to kill Jean Grey by committing suicide so that the physical connection between the two would kill Jean as well. However, the plan didn't work, and Madeline Pryor has been brought back in several X-Men stories since then. Others understand why I could not stay to say it this day. My what happens to Nathan in the comics? What'll happen to the baby in X-Men 97 if his mother is a clone? Nathan Summers had one of the most intriguing story arcs in X-Men comics, but his early life was plagued by tragedies. Even before his mother was abandoned by Cyclops, Nathan was targeted by Apocalypse, who found out that the baby would grow up to cause him a lot of trouble. He infected Nathan with the deadly techno-organic virus, and Nathan's parents were forced to let him be raised in the future, where there could be a potential cure for his condition. In a major twist, the future story arcs revealed that Nathan eventually turned out to be the time-traveling mutant Cable, and he was a serious threat to Apocalypse, just like he'd foreseen. It remains to be seen how X-Men 97 handles the fate of Nathan and his mother, but you can expect things to move in a similar direction, even if the Apocalypse part is not included in the narrative. Who is the real Jean Grey in X-Men 97? What will be the fate of the characters going ahead? There are two ways that we see the series resolving the confusion in the next episode. Firstly, if they stick to the theme of the comic books, then the one who arrives at the door is the real Jean Grey. She's probably managed to escape from her captivity, and now she arrives before the X-Men, only to find that her clone is posing as her among them. On the other hand, the show can also introduce a clever twist, where the one at the door might be Madeline Pryor, who managed to get away from Mr. Sinister and seeks help from the X-Men. However, we believe that the first option is far more likely, especially because it's already been established that the baby boy is named Nathan, just like in the comic books. As for the fate of Jean Grey and her clone, we don't see a happy ending for Madeline Pryor going ahead. If the mother of the baby is indeed the Jean Grey clone created by Mr. Sinister, there's a good chance that she and her baby boy will be abandoned by Cyclops and will try to reconcile with the actual Jean Grey. A confrontation between them is very much on the cards, and we also expect that Madeline Pryor will not take the rejection lightly and come back as one of the major villains in the series. If she goes through with the whole demonic possession thing as shown in the comics, you'll get to see an insane and terrifying version of this Jean Grey clone who will have all the powers of Jean Grey and more. Irrespective of what happens going ahead, the X-Men are caught up in a tricky situation and they'll need to resolve this internal conflict before they take on bigger issues like a potential sentinel threat looming large. Marvelous Verdict, a twist that will remind you of the comics. Previously, we created a video around the pregnancy of Jean Grey, and there we'd speculated about the possibility of the pregnant Jean Grey actually being her clone. As it turns out, we'd called it right, but we can't take the credit for that because an elaborate comic book storyline already exists featuring a similar event. At this point, it's safe to assume that the clone living with Cyclops so far is Madeline Pryor, and if that's the case, a journey is all set to go downhill from here on. It could be quite likely that she'd lose her mind about the trauma of being abandoned, and she'll become one of the greatest villains in the series. Of course, the series can manipulate some of these events, but uh, we can surely expect a lot more drama and action from Jean Grey and her clone, Madeline Pryor. Do let us know in the comments below about your thoughts on the first two episodes of X-Men 97, and don't forget to voice your opinion around the possibility of Jean Grey's clone emerging as a major villain going ahead. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if uh, you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.